Praise the Lord. So last week, last time when we read, we were talking about the sixth seal from Revelation 6, 12 to 17. So verses 12, 13 and 14 talks about the geographical changes and disasters. A great earthquake, a sun becoming black and sackcloth made of mm -hmm. hair, the moon becoming like blood and the stars fell to the sky. Sky split apart and mountains and islands moved out of their places. These were all the different changes that we discussed. And the earthquake, the significance of earthquake, the presence of God, demonstration of the power of God and the judgment of God. Some of the examples that we can see are in Exodus 19 through 18. On the mountain of Sinai, when God's presence was there, was mentioned in it. Isaiah 29, chapter 6, Ezra 38, 19, Matthew 27, 51, 28, 2. All of these things mention about different presence of God. Now, during the, du during the time of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, also it was mentioned, as well as Acts 16, 26, the earthquake when Paul and Silas was in prison. The second point we discussed is the sun will become black as a sackcloth, cloth made of um, you know, hair. The darkness represents the judgment of God. It mentioned in Ezra 32, verse 7, Exodus 10, 22, 23, Luke chapter 23, verse 44. The prophecies by Jesus and other prophets, um, Isaiah 13, 9, 10, and Joel 2, 31, and Amos 8, through nine. The third point we discussed was the moon will become like blood. That represents the wrath of judgment of God and the changes in the moon are mentioned in Isaiah chapter 13 verse 10, Job chapter 3 verse 31, Matthew chapter 24 verse 29. And then the stars of heaven will fall to the earth. That's also mentioned in Isaiah chapter 34 4. Hosts of the sky are the stars. Matthew chapter 24, 29 talks about stars will fall from the heaven. The fifth point we discussed about is the sky will split apart. The sky will be rolled up like a scroll. That's mentioned in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 13. And on verse 34, as well as, um, uh, as, well as Isaiah chapter 34, verse 4. And then 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 also. Next thing we discussed is mountains and islands will move out of their place. This signifies the death and the calamities mentioned also in Jeremiah chapter 4, Nahum chapter 1, and Revelation 16 as well. Revelation chapter 6 verses 15 through 17, none of them will be able to stand in front of the wrath of God. So it talks about the wrath of God right there. And those were part of the sixth seal. Now, we also discussed about the seventh seal that was opened, which is Revelations chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. Some of the significant points that we discussed was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Then we also spoke about the seal of judgment, the trumpet of judgment, and the vials of wrath of judgment. And we come across the verses where it mentions about 144,000 sealed people. That's in Revelations chapter 7, verse 4 and 4 through 8. We come across who will be there. First question that Pastor asked was why these people are sealed. The seal indicates ownership and protection. Genesis chapter 41, verse 42. Esther chapter 8, verse 8. And Matthew chapter 27, verse 6. Is 6. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit as per Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Revelations 14, 1 also, the Father's names are sealed. And Revelation 13, is uh, verse 17 and 18, talk about the mark or the seal of the beast or Antichrist. So that's the reasons why these people were sealed. The secondly, we discussed about who are these 144,000 people. Are they the chosen Jews to proclaim the gospel of kingdom of God in great tribulation period? Are they sons of Jacob? 12 tribes, Genesis chapter 29, verse 31 onwards, verse 31, 30, 24, 35, 18, multiple verses there. And then talks, the next thing we talked about was Jacob's wife and his children. Um, we talk about Leah, Leah's meaning is weary. And then we spoke about Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Dinah meaning of Dina was justice. 
and zilpa, which means dropping, or um, gad or asher. Gad and asher were the children. And then we spoke about Rachel, whose meaning is lamb. Joseph and Benjamin was the children. And Bilal, meaning timid. Dan and Naphtali was their children. At the, as a conclusion, Pastor also gave a homework. Uh, find out the names that we read here versus the difference in the names that we read in Revelations, talking about the, um, you know, where we spoke about the 144,000 people and where we spoke about the tribes. Who was missing out of Jacob's children? Or out of all the 12 tribes and, um, and missing from Revelation. Plus, who is the addition? Or if there is any addition, who are the additional people added in Revelation, which is not a part of Jacob's tribe? So that's where we conclude. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, uh, Siti, for elaborately uh, bringing all those points together. And uh, uh, as Siti said, uh, I gave you one homework. That means uh, we have been discussing from uh, Revelation chapter 6 and 7, uh, maybe uh, chapter 7 verses 1 through 8. So that was the portion that we already covered. And uh, I gave you one um, homework. Like uh, uh, in the previous class, I gave you the list of uh, 12 sons of Jacob uh, in his uh, four wives. But the list of the selected 12 tribes of uh, Revelation chapter 7 uh, verses 4 to 8, uh, some of the names are excluded. And the question is who all are excluded from the uh, list and who is included and why uh, those people are excluded and why those people are included. So uh, can you just give me the answer for that? I mean, who all are excluded and who is included from that, from that list, maybe uh, chapter seven. You can find out, it, find out from uh, that list of seven. Pastor, um, my father is saying Dan. 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 Only Dan? One more person is there. One more tribe is here. Dan Ephraim. is one of them, but the other one who is missing, right? Yes, two are missing. Two are missing. Yeah. Ephraim. Ephraim and Dan. Okay. So because of lack of time, I will, I will just move on. Okay. Ephraim and Dan, they are missing from that list. Uh, but Joseph is included. Okay, Joseph is included in this group because uh, you know that Joseph is the father of Manasseh and Ephraim. Okay, instead of Ephraim, uh, Joseph is included in uh, this group. And now, uh, why Dan's name is uh, excluded from that? Dan is a tribe of uh, uh, Jewish and uh, a, tri a tribe of Israel. And why the name of Dan is excluded from that? You can you can find many many reasons for that. But uh, you know when you read Bible, uh, Bible gives us some of the reasons why uh, Dan's name is not included in the list of these sealed people. So these sealed people are from different twelve tribes of Israel. But you know uh, Dan's name is excluded from there and. It is believed that uh, Dan is uh, one uh, who brought the idol worship in Israel. So maybe uh, when you read uh, Judges chapter 18 or uh, maybe verses, uh, uh, Judges chapter 18 verses 30 and 31 or First Kings chapter 12 verses 29 and 30, you will understand that Dan was the, was the person and uh, the, the, the sons of Dan, they brought the idol worship in, in Israel. So that may be the reason that uh, uh, Dan is not included in this uh, particular list of uh, 144,000. And also, if you read uh, Genesis chapter 49, verse 17, Genesis chapter 49, verse 17, you can see that uh, when Jacob was blessing uh, his children, he blessed Dan in a different way, in a different way. So that may be the reason. Anyways, we understand that uh, uh, the, the sons of Dan or the people uh, from the tribe of Dan uh, are mingled and compromised with the, the Gentiles and uh, the idolatry. Uh, this may be the reason that the tribe of Dan is not included or uh, the, the tribe of Dan is omitted in this beautiful list of 144,000 sealed in uh, book of Revelation chapter seven, verses four to eight. 
Okay, so that that is the answer for that, and that is the uh, clarity for that. And now, as I told you earlier in chapter seven, uh, we see there are two different group of people. Okay, in chapter seven, you can see there are two different uh, group of people. The first group is mentioned in chapter seven, verses four to eight. And the second group is mentioned in verses nine to 17. So nine to 17, when you read, you can see there is a group of people. It is known as the great multitude in white robes. The great multitude in white robes. So we are going to study about who are this group and who all are these people. You know, the great uh, multitude in white robes. That is from Revelation chapter seven, uh, verses 9 to 17. Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. Uh, so if you're writing down, you can just note it down and then uh, I'll try to explain all those points. The great multitude in white robes. That is from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. A great and uh, numerous multitude and they are from every nation, all tribes, all people and all tongues standing before the throne and before the lamb clothed in white robes which means victory holiness and separation should i read this uh, wait wait uh, um yeah 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 danny is going to read today the bible verses Yes, Danny, you can read it out now. Yeah, when the when the others are writing down, you can read that portion. Yeah, Revelation chapter seven, verses nine to seventy. Yes, Danny. After these things, I look and behold a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, "Salvation belongs to our God." who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders of the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits in the throne will dwell among them and shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Okay, thank you, Danny. So here, you can see uh, there, uh, I told you that uh, uh, there are two groups of people, and this is the second group in uh, uh, chapter seven. So it is known as the great multitude in white robes, okay? So the specialities of this group of people are, this is a great multitude, and this multitude is, numerous that means we cannot count the i mean john could not count how many people were there and they are from every nation and they are from all tribes and they are from all peoples and they are from all tongues and also that shows that god doesn't have any partiality so god is taking the people from every nation every tribe every people every tongue okay so that is the meaning of that and God doesn't have any partiality. And also uh, they are standing before the throne and before the lamb. They are standing before the throne and before the lamb. That also is written in that particular portion. So we already read the portion, so we are not going to read all those portions again, but let me, let me explain all, all those points. And also again, one more thing is there. They are clothed in white robes. They are clothed in white robes. Means, you know, when you study Bible, we understand the white cloth is uh, for, a, for a victorious people. You know, the white cloth always indicates the victorious people and uh, the white shows the holiness and separation. White shows 
the holiness and separation. And few more things are there that uh, you will get the screen sharing now. And uh, yeah, that is, and in their hands, okay, when you read that portion, you will understand in the hands of those, those people, the, the great multitude, in the hands, there were uh, palm branches. Okay? There were palm branches. You can see that. And uh, the meaning of that, uh, I mean, holding the palm branches in the hands, that means I mean, a celebration or joy or rest. Okay, And also, that they are celebrating the victory over the sin, over the world, and over the Antichrist. Okay, so this is the reason that John is watching that vision and he is saying that, okay, in their hands, in the hands of those people, those who were in heaven, I was seeing something and there in their hands, there was palm branches, okay? So always the palm branches shows about the celebration and joy and the rest, okay? So we can say that those people, those who were there, they were celebrating the victory. They were celebrating the victory over the sin and the world and the, and over the Antichrist. Because during those days, the Antichrist is ruling over the world. So these are the people we will be studying about, I mean, who are these people? And also the other thing is, their robes are washed by the blood of the lamb. Their robes are washed by the blood of the lamb. And again, one more thing is that they cry out that salvation is the gift of God. They cry out that the salvation is the gift of God. So these people are, and their robes or their clothes are washed by the blood of the lamb. And they are, all, they are just crying out that salvation is the gift of God. Okay, so just let me tell you one thing. That these people, uh, it says that they are the one who comes out of the great tribulation. This is the main point from uh, that portion you, can, you have to think about. You know, These are the people and these are the ones who comes out of the great tribulation. Okay, so if somebody is saying that, okay, this group of people are the present believers or the believers, those who are dead in Christ, uh, and uh, we cannot connect that point with uh, this point because, I mean, we people are not out of, we are not coming out of the great tribulation. Okay? The people, those who are presently living in this world, we doesn't have that great tribulation. We have tribulation and we have problems and we have troubles. But at the same time, we are not going through the great tribulation now. But after the second coming of Jesus Christ, there will be a seven year of great tribulation. And in those days, in that seven year of uh, great tribulation, uh, there will be a group of people and they will be known as the martyred believers, martyred believers during the time of the Great Tribulation. Okay, so these people, those who are mentioned in uh, chapter 7, verses 9 following, the great multitude in white robes, they might be the people, those who are known as the martyred believers. Okay, so uh, the 144,000 uh, people from among the uh, Israel uh, will preach the gospel of Christ and many will be saved that day. They will not be, I mean, uh, 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 bowed down in front of Antichrist. So the Antichrist will insist the people, the humble the, the people to go down uh, before Antichrist. And uh, he will be insisting many, many other uh, uh, idly things and uh, the worldly things. But there will be a group of people, those who, uh, those who will not be uh, uh, willing to bow down uh, in front of Antichrist. So that may, I mean, uh, those people, the, 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 the great multitude of people will have to face the persecution, okay? And uh, uh, many will become martyrs. So when the Antichrist is uh, 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 giving uh, uh, much pressure upon the people, and when uh, the Antichrist is torturing the people, you know, uh, some of the people, most of the people, uh, those uh, men who are in the great tribulation, they will say, no, no, we cannot bow down before Antichrist and we have to uh, go with Jesus Christ and we have to receive Jesus as a personal savior. And those people will be getting more persecution, more torturing and more problems. And those people will become martyrs. Okay? They will have to die for the sake of uh, 
I mean, uh, Lord's name. So those people will be there. Uh, and John is watching those people at the at, in, in heaven. I mean, particularly, I mean, this group of people known as the great multitude in white robes. So that is the meaning of that uh, I mean, portion, maybe uh, verses nine through 70. Okay, now, uh, and if you have any questions or clarification for all these portions, you can just text to me. I will try to give you the answer maybe in the next class, okay? If you are getting any, any question out of these portions and uh, we will clarify that and uh, uh, we will we'll try for that. Okay, now we will go to uh, chapter eight. The chapter eight, uh, you can see uh, mainly the seven trumpets are there. So we are going to study about the seven trumpets, seven trumpets, okay. So regarding seven trumpets, you can see from Revelation chapter eight, verses six to 13, and chapter nine, verses one to 21, and chapter 11, verses 15 to 19. Okay, so uh, in about the seven trumpets, we are going to study about the seven trumpets, which is mentioned in chapter eight, chapter nine, <clears throat> and chapter 11. Okay, we will read those portions later, but we are, I mean, trying to, I mean, find out what is the meaning of the seven trumpets, which is written in chapter eight, nine and 11. Okay, um, you have to think about one thing that these uh, seven trumpets will be followed by the bowel judgments, okay? So after the, uh, after the uh, trumpet judgment, there will be a bowel judgment. And this is also known as the trumpet judgment, okay? So this is known as the trumpet judgment, okay? So uh, we are going to study about that. You know, when you study about the trumpet, uh, the trumpet judgments are released during the first half of the tribulation. Okay? The trumpet judgments are released during the first half of the tribulation. And then the bowel judgments uh, will be released during the last half of the great tribulation. As I told you, the great tribulation period will be for seven years. And during the first half of the tribulation, uh, the, the trumpet judgment will be released and the bowel judgments will be released during the last half of the great tribulation, okay? And that also is called as the wrath of God, okay? So wrath of God means the judgment is coming upon the people, upon the unbelieving people, unbelieving world, I mean, because they did not believe in Jesus Christ when Jesus was on this earth and when after the death of Jesus Christ and ascension of Jesus Christ, there will be many people those who are not able to believe in Jesus Christ as Lord. So the wrath of God will come upon those people during the time of great tribulation. And uh, you can read maybe Revelation chapter 14, verse 10, and chapter 15, verse 7. Revelation chapter 14, verse uh, 10. Okay, okay, can I read that verse? Yeah, now, 14 verse uh, 10, you can read like this. He also will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And also, chapter 15 verse 7 says, that one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels, seven golden bowls, full of the, the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. So you have to understand one thing. After the trumpet judgment, there will be a judgment by God, which is known as the wrath of God or the bowel judgment. We will study about all those points maybe when we go to world, I mean, chapters 14 and 15 or something. So the trumpet judgments are almost parallel uh, to the plagues that God sent on the land of Egypt. Uh, during the time of Moses. We know that during the time of Moses, uh, when Moses was asking the Pharaoh that uh, uh, you have to release our people from Egypt, so we have to go uh, to worship the living God. Then uh, Pharaoh was saying, no, no, we cannot send you for that. And uh, maybe three times he was asking, asking and asking, and, uh, and uh, he was not allowing them to go outside of the Egypt. At, this, at, the, at the same time, we understand that at last, God was sending 10 plagues upon the people of uh, the people of Egypt, Pharaoh and his and his people. So we understand that 
uh, when you study about the trumpet judgments, uh, which is uh, almost parallel uh, to the plagues that uh, God has sent on the land of Egypt during the, uh, during the time of Moses. And we have to note uh, one more thing from there that the trumpet and the bowel judgments touch on the same areas. Okay, so I told you that mainly there are, okay, the, the first one was the seal, seal judgment. We already covered it. Seal judgment, we already covered it. And the second one is the trumpet judgment. And the third one will be the bowel judgment. We will, we will study about the bowel judgment. Okay, so listen, one more thing that the trumpet and the bow judgments touch on the same area, same area, okay? Just I will give you uh, some of the references regarding that as a, as, a, as a chart you are getting there now. So this is a chart that you can understand always the trumpet and the, the bow judgments are coming together. That means uh, that will be affecting the same areas, okay? So just write it down. We are going to read, we are not going to read all those, I mean, uh, verses. So I gave you as a chart, like the trumpets, the judgments, the bowels, okay? The trumpets, the judgments. Yeah, the trumpets, the judgments, the bowels. And in the first one is chapter eight, verses one to seven. And the judgment is on the earth. And the same thing is read in chapter 16, verses one and two. And the second one is chapter eight, Verses eight and nine, um, the judgment is on the sea. Same thing is written in 16 verse three also. Third one is chapter eight, verses 10 and 11. The judgment will be on the rivers. <clears throat> and the same thing is written in chapter 16, verses four to seven. And the fourth one is from chapter eight, verses 12 and 13. Judgment will be upon the heavens. And the next verse is chapter 16, verses 8 to 9. And the fifth one will be from chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. And the judgment will be on the mankind, and it is going to be a torment. And the same thing is written in chapter 16 verses 10 and 11. And the sixth one is from Revelation chapter nine, verses 13 through 21. And an army is coming, an army is coming. That means an army is coming for a desolation to, to destroy something, okay? So, and the same thing is uh, mentioned in chapter 16, verses 12 to 16 also. And the seventh one is in chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. Chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. And you can see the judgment is just like an angry nations. The nations will get angry and that is going to be a desolation. The same thing is written in chapter 16, verses 17 through 21. So we are not going to elaborately say anything about these points because we will be, I mean, are discussing about all those things as we as we move on in the in the in the next portion. Okay. So uh, that is the end of that uh, seven points, and we are going to the next heading, that is the total effect of trumpet judgments. So now we are studying about the trumpet judgments. Okay, the trumpet judgments will be followed by the seal judgments. Okay, so after the seal judgment, there, there is a small gap. Then again, in chapter eight, the same thing is happening. The judgment of God is coming upon the, upon the people, the unbelieving world. Okay, so now we are going to study about the total effect of Trumper judgments. So how the trumpet judgments are going to affect the people, those who are living during the time of the great tribulation. So we already uh, discussed that in chapter eight, verses one and two, there was a silence in heaven for about half an hour, right? You know, read, uh, uh, it is starting like that only. Chapter eight, verse one, when the lamb broke the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven for about half an hour. We already 
discuss about all those points. So during the silence, the seven angels were given seven trumpets. Okay? During this silence, the seven angels were given seven trumpets. So trumpets had an important role in Israel's national life. When you study, study about the history of the people of Israel, they were always giving importance for the trumpets. They were giving always importance for the trumpets. When you read uh, Numbers chapter 10, you can see what are the main and important purposes of uh, the trumpet. Okay, the first one, which is written there, that chapter chapter 10, uh, uh, verse maybe verse two. Uh, yeah, Danny, you can read that. Numbers chapter 10, verse two. Make two silver trumpets for yourself. You shall make them of hammered work. You shall use them for calling and congress, con congregation and okay. for directing the movement of the camps. Thank you. So what is the first purpose of the, for the, uh, the trumpet in the Old Testament? No, it is to call all the people together, to call all the people together. And the second purpose of trumpet, using the trumpet is in verse nine, Numbers chapter 10, verse nine, Great. You will go to war in your land against the enemy who opposes you. Then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets, and you will be remembered before the Lord your God, and you will be saved from your enemies. Okay, so that is, the second one is to announce the war, to announce the war. And the third one is in chapter 10, verse 10. Also, in the day of, in the day of your gladness, in your appointed feasts, at the beginning of your months, you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, and they shall be a memorial for you before your God. I am the Lord your God. Okay. So the third purpose of the trumpet, blowing the trumpet, is uh, to announce the special occasions, like just like uh, some of the feast and uh, at uh, the special location like the offerings or sacrifices of when when something is something special is happening so they have to uh, blow the uh, the trumpet so that is the idea that we are getting from uh, the old testament okay so when uh, god is giving this vision to uh, 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 apostle john apostle john so we can understand that uh, john might have heard all those things in his mind that what is going to happen in what is happening in the Old Testament when the, the trumpet is blown. Okay, so the same thing is happening here also that something is going to happen on the earth. Something is something severe, something dangerous things are going to happen on the earth. So that might be in the in the in the mind of Apostle John when he was receiving this vision and when he was writing all these points in, in his notes. Okay, so we are going to uh, look into that particular portion with the background of this, I mean, a trumpet. Okay, so we have to understand one thing from there, that there are many things happening. Okay, there are many disasters happening. There are many desolations happening. So we are going to look into the desolation which happened in chapter eight, verses seven through 13. Okay, so we will read that verse first. Okay, the desolation, the desolation which happened from chapter eight, verses seven through 13. The first angel sounded and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood and they were thrown to the earth and a third of the trees were burned up and all green grass was burned up. Then the second angel sounded and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and became a third and a third of the sea became blood and a third of the living creatures in the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star was Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Then a fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of three angels who are able to sound. 
very good thank you dani so okay so desolation so malayalathile adinu parayanengil shunyata allengil or nasham undagam shunyata undagam motthu or or destruction nadakkan povva so desolation nadakkunnathu vyathyastha reethigalana so in in different aspects okay the dissolution is happening in different aspects that means uh, you know when you read chapter 8 verses 7 through 13 the first four trumpets judgments are natural okay it is happening something in the nature okay in that they affect always the land the the the, the salt water uh, the fresh water and the heavenly bodies also you know the fifth and the sixth judgments involve the release of demonic i mean forces that first torment and then they are trying to kill the people okay so the last of the trumpet judgments in the revelation chapter 11 verses 15 uh, to 19 uh, that will create a crisis among uh, all the nations of the world so that is going to happen during the time of the great tribulation so we are going to study about i mean which are the aspects of the desolation which is going to happen during the time of the uh, during the time of the great tribulation okay let us look into uh, that point that i mean the first one would be the desolation on earth okay the first desolation will be on the earth that is what we read in chapter 8 verse 7 it says that the first sounded that means the first trumpet was blown okay and there came hail and fire mixed with blood and they were thrown into the earth and a third of the earth was burned up and a third of the trees were burned up and all the green grass was burned up okay listen so when the first trumpet was blown there came a hail and a fire mixed with blood okay so let us study what are the meanings of these things you know in 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 bible especially in the old testament we understand the hail indicates what is that in malayalam kalmada right kalmada okay so the hail indicates the sudden judgment of god that is what we read in exodus chapter 9 verses 22 and 23 we are, we are going, not going to read that those verses because we know that okay the hail indicates the sudden judgment of god when god was punishing the, the people of egypt he was sending the 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 hail as a plague okay so hail indicates the sudden judgment of god and also the fire the fire indicates the wrath of god that is in genesis chapter 19 verse 24 okay always in bible the fire is indicating about the wrath of god okay genesis chapter 19 verse 24 and also blood is there so blood always indicates the death that is very common so blood always indicates the death okay now we will uh, try to i mean uh, understand what is the meaning of this that means here you can see that hail and fire the hail and the fire mingled with blood what remains is that you know the seventh plague that god sent against is egypt when you read exodus chapter 9 verses 18 to 26 you will understand that there was the hail hail and fire mingled with blood that means that will remind you that the plague which happened and which god has sent against the egypt okay so always that remains that and also when you read the joel chapter 2 verse 30 when you read that verse then joel chapter 2 verse 30 uh, in that particular verse the prophet joel also is promised that blood and fire in the last days in the last days the blood and fire will be coming so that is prophesied, prophesied by joel chapter 2 verse 20, 30 and i will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke okay so again i mean the same thing is uh, written in that portion uh, when you study about this portion we have to understand one thing that since this is the this is the supernatural judgment uh, it is written that the green vegetarians okay vegetation the green vegetation and the the, the fruit trees and the grass okay one third of which is burned up one third of which is burned up you know um you can just imagine how this would affect not only the, the the balance of the nature okay but also the food supply also will be affected by this problem okay when this judgment is happening 
you know the the one third of the green i mean vegetation one third of the fruit trees and one third of the grass everything will be burned up okay so something different is going to happen during those days and the food supply also will be affected by this judgment and it would be a devast i mean uh, uh, the, the the you can you can see that you know meat and milk and industries will be also also will be uh, affected by this judgment uh you have to know one thing that you know uh, when uh, usually uh, the, the the plants and the trees are using carbon dioxide and they are produce, producing the oxygen okay so i am is trying to tell you that what is going to happen when this judgment is happening so when god is sending uh, this i mean this judgment upon the people on those days what is going to happen really okay think about you know we know that the plants and the trees usually they are using the carbon dioxide and they are producing the oxygen for other people that means the human and the animals are receiving the oxygen and the trees always make their own food uh, through a different process they have their own uh, their own uh, process for their food and plants need uh, i mean three main in the ingredients to uh, make their own food the water should be there carbon dioxide should be there and sunlight should be there so with this three uh, ingredients they are making their food water carbon dioxide and sunlight so i'm trying to tell you I mean, what is going to happen for the people on those days you know usually the plants are taking up the water that they need from the soil through their roots yeah, they have a root and they are receiving the water from the soil through their roots and carbon dioxide is a is a, is a gas uh, formed in the air and trees can take that carbon dioxide through their leaves also okay through the leaves they are receiving that carbon dioxide and once they have water and the carbon dioxide they can they can you can uh, use that energy from sunlight to make their food so that is the food of the trees and the plants okay through the sunlight they are making their food with the carbon dioxide and also with the water then they have the leftover of their food that is called the oxygen okay so they are giving that oxygen and they are releasing that oxygen for for every human and every animal okay? and this oxygen is released from the leaves into the air and this oxygen is really important for humans and the animals to live and uh, uh, which which you know we breathe in in from uh, everything from uh, the air and we uh, breathe out when we release carbon dioxide into the air uh, which then uh, used by the plants to make their food this system uh, you can understand that uh, the the when the people those who are studying the science you know that that system is known as the oxygen cycle okay so this is happening through the through the plants and the trees always okay so that is a i mean that is a process which is i mean happening i mean as a, as a circle okay uh, what i am trying to say is according to uh, chapter 8 verse 7 you know we understand that a, th a third of the earth will burn up and also a third of the trees uh, will be burned up and all the green grass will be burned up then what will happen huh? you will you will see the laxity of the oxygen will cause many to die without oxygen okay where there, there if there is no oxygen the people die okay even we we are aware about uh, the importance of the oxygen in this pandemic situation even now okay because of lack of uh, the the oxygen uh, many many died in different different countries especially in india many people died because of the uh, laxity of the oxygen so that is going to happen when god is sending the uh, the punishment the, the judgment upon the people you know as we read in uh, chapter 8 verse 7 the first sounded and there came a hail and fire mixed with the blood and they were thrown into the earth i mean many things are going to happen okay the grass will be i mean uh, burned up and the trees will be i mean burned up and uh, the earth will be burned up the one third of all those things okay so that is going to happen so that is the meaning of that i mean that point and again the second one is the desolation in the seas okay the next one is the desolation in the seas we already read that portion i think okay so in chapter 8 verses 8 uh, and 
uh, okay, we, uh, we can see there the desolation in the seas. Okay, uh, let me give you some more portions from there that when the second trumpet was blown, we see the water of the sea became blood. Okay, and the first trumpet, okay, judgment was mainly on the ground or the earth, but the second was mainly on the sea. Remember one thing, the first trumpet judgment was mainly on the ground or the earth. And the second will be mainly on the sea. But the third will be mainly on the rivers and the springs of the water. Rivers and the springs of the water. Okay. And, you know, here you can see that the, the, the turning water into the blood. Okay. So here in, in this particular verse, you can see that you can see that water is turning into the blood. Okay? When you read Exodus chapter 7, verses uh, 19 to 21, you will understand that that will remind us about the first Egyptian, Egyptian flag. Okay? God was sending the first Egyptian flag upon the people of Egypt. Right? So that is written in chapter 7, verses 19 to 21. Okay? So turning water into blood. So that is what you are reading in uh, verses 8 and 9, specifically that when the second angel sounded, or the second trumpet was blown, something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood. Okay, so here we see that a fiery object, a fiery object like a, like a burning mountain was cast out from heaven. Okay, a fiery object like a burning mountain which was cast out from heaven and something is happening there that the triple judgment is resulted there. Okay? The triple judgment is resulted there. What is that? Okay? The first thing is a third part of the salt water turned to blood. Okay? There are three judgments. The, there are three results about the judgment of uh, this thing that a third part of the salt water turned into the blood. Secondly, a third part of the creatures in the sea died. Third part of the creatures in the sea died. And the third one is third of the ships were destroyed. Okay. So which are the which are the areas that the destruction is coming? Okay. When this judgment is coming, or when the second uh, uh, what is that second uh, uh, trumpet judgment is blown, you know. Many things are happening, mainly three things are happening, okay? And the, that means, you know, the, the th a third part of the salt water will be turning into the blood, and a third part of the creatures in the sea will die, and a third part of the ship will be destroyed. These all things will be happening. That means, you now what is going to happen? The uh, ecological and an economic disaster will take place on those days. That means, uh, on those days, there will be much pollution, okay? Even today also, we are suffering with all those kinds of pollution and all, and how much more will be in those days when God is sending his judgment upon the people in those days, okay? So you will find that there will be much of pollution on those days. And we know that the, the, the oceans, okay, the oceans or the water uh, occupy about three-fourths of the Earth's surface. Okay, uh, then you can imagine the extent of this judgment. Okay, so when God is sending this judgment on the earth, okay, or on the sea, on the sea, you have to think about when the ocean or the water occupy about three fourths of the earth's surface. Okay, then you can you have to imagine what would be the extent of this judgment. Okay, the pollution of the water and the death of so many creatures. Would greatly affect the, the, the balance of life in the oceans and that would lead to many of them to be in trouble and many will be dying because of these problems and these judgments okay so that is the meaning of that uh, I mean dissolution on the sea dissolution on the sea now we will go to the next portion that is from verses 10 and 11 verses 10 and 11. Uh, that is the desolation in the fresh water. The desolation in the fresh water. Okay? That means 
you know this judgment is affected by every areas every areas okay so the uh, this is happening uh, on the fresh water okay we know that uh, when the third trumpet was blown we see a great star fell from heaven okay and uh, the name the name of that star is wormwood okay wormwood and in in, in verse uh, in verse 10 uh, it says that the third angel sounded and a great star fell from heaven burning like a torch and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of the waters the name of the star is wormwood and a third of the waters became wormwood and many men died from the waters because they were made bitter okay malayalathil ezhuthirikkunnathu ah yeah oru samudra മൂന്നാമത്തെ ദൂത നൂതി അപ്പോൾ ദീപം പോലെ ജ്വലിക്കുന്ന ഒരു മഹാനക്ഷത്രം ആകാശത്തൊന്ന് വീണു നദികളിൽ മൂന്നിലൊന്നിന്മേൽ നീർവക ഉരവകളിന്മേലും ആയിരുന്നു വീണത് ആ നക്ഷത്രത്തിന് കാഞ്ഞിരം എന്ന് പേര് ഓക്കെ വട്ട് ഇസ് എ മീനിങ് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് ബിറ്റർ തിങ് ദോംവുഡ് മലയാളത്തിൽ പറഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്നത് അതിന് കാഞ്ഞിരം എന്നായിരുന്നു പേര് വെള്ളത്തിൽ മൂന്നിലൊന്ന് കാഞ്ഞിരം പോലെയായി വെള്ളം കയ്പ്പായതിനാൽ മനുഷ്യരിൽ പലരും മരിച്ചു പോയി ഓക്കെ എന്താണ് കാഞ്ഞിരം പോലെ കയ്പുള്ളതായിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരവസ്ഥയിലേക്ക് അന്ന് വെള്ളം ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ഫ്രഷ് വാട്ടർ നല്ല ഫ്രഷ് വാട്ടർ ആയിരുന്നു പക്ഷെ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബിക്കം ജസ്റ്റ് ലൈക്ക് എ ബിറ്റർ ലൈക്ക് എ വോംബുഡ് ഓക്കെ സോ വെൻ യു സ്റ്റഡി അബൌട്ട് ഐ മീൻ ദിസ് ജഡ്ജ്മെന്റ് യു ഹാവ് ടു അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് വൺ തിങ് ദർ ഇസ് നോ ഡിറക്റ്റ് ഐ മീൻ പാരലൽ ഇൻസിഡൻറ് ഹിയർ ടു എനി ഓഫ് ദ ഫ്ലാഗ്സ് ഓഫ് ഈജിപ്റ്റ് ബട്ട് വി ക്യാൻ ഇൻറ്ററാക്ട്ലി uh connect this even with uh, uh, after the after the exodus when uh, the people of israel were encountered with uh, the bitter waters okay, at uh, at mara okay uh, which is uh, uh, mentioned in exodus chapter 15 uh, verses 23 to 27 when you read uh, exodus chapter 15 verses 23 to 27 you can see that i mean uh, uh, when 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 the people of israel they were coming from egypt when they reached to the place called mara uh, the the water which was there uh, was not able to i mean drink and they were not able to drink that water because it was it was bitter okay because of the bitterness then uh, moses what moses did moses had to purify the water with a special purification process okay you know that what was the process that uh, what was the purification process that moses were doing in 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 that situation okay you know uh, motor i mean moses was just crying out to the lord and uh, uh, he i mean uh, god gave a vision and god gave a, a message to him and uh, he was taking the tree and uh, he was throwing the tree into the water and the water uh, became sweet okay so that was the incident which happened there you know think about something which is happening here when the fresh waters are becoming bitter okay and they will not be able to drink that fresh water because it is already bitter okay because of uh, this problem because of this problem okay there is no purification process in those days that means during the time of the great tribulation there is no purification okay no supernatural purification will be available uh, during the great tribulation time so here uh, we see that god's wrath touches the rivers and the fountains of the water and the wells and the rivers will be polluted okay and also making the fresh water taste better bitter like i mean wormwood so you have to understand one third of these rivers and their sources will become so bitterly polluted that drinking their water could produce I mean, death to many okay so this is going to happen during the time of the great tribulation okay the the, the i mean fresh water will become the bitter water and the people will not be able to drink those water because only because of the judgment of god because they were not believing in jesus christ and we will we will go to the last point also and we will uh, try to stop that point and the last point is desolation in the heavens desolation in the heavens okay that is from verses 12 to 13 uh, yeah danny you can read that i mean only two verses maybe uh chapter 8 verses 12 and 13 okay. by that time others can write down those points
Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked, and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blast of the trumpets of the three angels who are about to sound. So listen, when the fourth trumpet was blown, we see the darkness. We see the darkness day and night. Okay, so this judgment uh, parallels the, the, the ninth plague in Egypt, so which is written in Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 to 23. Okay, so which will last for three days. Okay, so every, every judgments are related or connected with uh, some kind of plagues in Egypt. Okay, so that's what we understand from these portions. And also, uh, the judgments from the, from the first three trumpets affected only the third part of the land and the waters. But what about this one? What about the, 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 the fourth judgment or fourth trumpet judgment? Okay, this is going to affect uh, the entire world the entire world, including sun, moon, and the stars also. Okay? You just think about the vast changes in temperature and that will, that will occur and how these will uh, affect uh, human health and the food growth. So that is going to happen. And at this point, you know, uh, 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 you can see in verse 13, especially it is written, then I looked and I heard an eagle, okay, eagle flying in mid heaven, saying with a loud voice, Okay, so in this point, what is happening there? A remarkable messenger is coming. It is called as an eagle, but in some translation, it is angel. Okay, the messenger or eagle or angel will appear in the sky and proclaiming with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth. So that shows that when the remaining three trumpets are blown, okay, already four is done, and when the remaining three trumpets are blown, much more severe judgments are going to come up. Okay? That is on the way. Okay? And that will come upon the inhabitants of the earth, or it's going to be more terrible, terrible than the previous four trumpet I mean, judgments. So we have been studying about, uh, we have to study about seven trumpet judgments, but we already covered by the grace of God till the four trumpets, okay, four trumpet judgments. So we have been discussing about what is going to happen upon the people during those days. Okay? So let us all, I mean, commit ourselves with the mighty hand of God. Let us all close our eyes in the presence of God and let us pray together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. As we are concluding,